fun! Ah. <laughs> the water was was interesting. They seem to have not got the memo that English people don't need a visa at the moment. So uh, I kind of had to just convince her. But I am here in Kazakhstan. Oh yes. So that's 5,000 kilometers down on a 10,000 kilometer journey, which means I've crossed the halfway mark. And the interesting thing about that is that every kilometer I go forwards, I'm closer to India than I am my house. Which means there's no going back. On what? Yes. <laughs> There's moments, there's moments in your travels where you just kind of take a small step back and have a look around and just fucking laugh. I'm in Kazakhstan on a bicycle. <laughs> ah. Oh my God. So happy right now. Yes. <laughs> found a place to swim under this bridge and I am going to make the most out of what's left uh, of the rivers that I can find in this area. So I am going in. You just, you have to wait for this one. This shows the extent things have changed within the last few kilometers. <laughs> oh my god. Hello, you guys. Look at this. So yes, we all know Kazakhstan is famous to most of us for one thing. I don't think I have to say what that is, but in these next 15 days that I've been given, I'm going to try and expand our minds on what happens in Kazakhstan. So literally within a couple of kilometers of coming into Kazakhstan, the, uh, the contrast with Russia is almost instantaneous. It's huge. Uh, the roads, uh, <laughs> the roads just kind of disappear and become non-existent at stages. Um, the people are so different. The pe everybody wants to stop and wave, beep their horn. The people are so much more um, forward in your face, like they don't mind to sort of open up your bags and have a look what's inside. <laughs> but in a friendly way, they're all super friendly, they all want to know what's going on, why are you here? Um, <laughs> and the trees have nearly completely disappeared. The desert is coming and it's coming fast. <laughs> uh, rivers now have completely gone. All I've got is sand, dry plants, uh, a couple of little shrubs and, uh, and a bunch of really friendly people. Kazakhstan! Oh, so I just found this guy on the road. I just, uh, as you can see, I just threw my bike on the floor because there was a car behind me so he didn't get run over, but I think he's already been hit by a car. Um, but hopefully, he doesn't seem to be badly injured. Hopefully, <coughs> when he gets his head back together, he'll be okay. Oh, little buddy. So uh, I'm just gonna put him Hide him down in the grass somewhere because I think if I take him with me, it's going to be more shock. Oh, you are too cute. Out here in the desert, 
there is uh, no water that I can go and filter and, and use when I start to run out, like now. But, I figured out, if I keep my eyes open, there seems to be bottles of water that people kind of drop and leave that I can just sort of pick up and filter and there I go! Done! Nice! Score! They're like partially free range camels. They let them range around, little piece of material around their neck and then when they want them they catch them for some time in the year. So they just kind of do what they want most of the time. Not impressed. Kazakhstan is, unlike its reputation, the richest country in Central Asia. And that is thanks to these guys right here. Out here in the middle of the desert, there's one thing you will find, and that is oil donkeys. Uh, they are dotted all around here. There is a lot of oil in Kazakhstan, and because of this, you have a lot of rich people. Mad Max style scavenging out here in the desert. I now feel like a superhero with these glassless glasses. So today I'm gonna to do my biggest distance so far uh, between towns. It's 130 kilometers of pure desert. And it's made worse by the fact that Two kilometers over there is the Caspian Sea. Two kilometers of sand. I am not willing to push my bag through that. But it's just there. A big, massive pond of water. Ah! This is my top speed with this desert wind. Ah! Water! Water! I just came for a, a swim, met lots of uh, amazing Kazakhstan people and now they are arguing about where I'm going to sleep, in his house or his house or his house and everyone's going to say hello! Hello! <laughs> and they're wild. Hello! Yeah! My second Kazakh passenger. Wave. Hello. <laughs> I think he's a bit confused. So, do Kazakh video. The Kazakh video, yeah, da da da. Video, da da. So, I just put my bike in the garage, and now we have all piled into a car with a bunch of drunk guys, and we are going. No problem. No problem. There is no problem. Definitely. Wherever we are going, there is no problem. No problem. <laughs> Oh, I must say, today I am feeling a little rough around the edges. Last night was my first night with, uh, with the Kazakh people after a 160 kilometer day. And oh my God, they are wild. They just want to eat and drink 
and shout and blah, blah all the night. And they definitely do not want to sleep, which is exactly what I wanted to do after such a big day yesterday. Oh, look, there's camels in the town. <laughs> look at this. There's camels in the town. Kazakhstan. <laughs> kilometers of desert later and I am arriving at my first Kazakh city at Rao. In uh, at Rao. Uh, yesterday I was on the street sort of trying to find Wi-Fi so I could get hold of someone to find somewhere to stay and uh, this lovely guy, Daniel, a uh, local guy, he came up to me and just started asking if I needed help and now I'm staying at his house and uh, since I've been here they just keep feeding me and so I've just been told that my dish is downstairs <laughs> and uh, here if I come down, breakfast, look at that, <laughs> breakfast, wow just repairing all of my uh, burst inner tubes from the previous few weeks and um, I just got my next delivery of food for the day. <laughs> uh, this I don't think could be any more of a contrast to the Kazakhstan that I've been experiencing the last four days. Uh, we're now in some swanky restaurant eating swanky food uh, in, in, in a pretty nice city with a bunch of lovely people. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>